Hello, welcome to Phil's RC channel and gaming channel. Now, uh, I know most of you probably know this, but one or two people's asked me if uh, I could show them how to use the AI system. Well, I'm not that up on it, to be honest with you. I've set up signs, these sig you know, the signs, uh, that stop trains, control speed, reverse on one layout, on the other layout, Earlstown Junction, I've used stop signs, stop at stations, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, speed signs. Uh, I can't get the AI light signals to actually work the way I want them to on my layout. But I'm just going to do a basic one, following the uh, official guide, AI guidelines. I'm just going to build a simple loop layout with a double loop. And we'll, this is the first time I've done this, so we'll have to just see what happens. You'll have to just bear with me. Just make sure the track's straight. By pushing it to the edge. Well, I said you'll have to just bear with me while I think. Why I'm doing this, I'm actually thinking. I haven't even had a practice at this yet. I thought I'd just go in for it, straight off of it, straight into it, and we'll just see what happens. Start off with the uh, first loop, single track. That's the first side in done. Just go and get some curves. Oh, I'll we'll go from the other end. <laughs> we'll just build the uh, Second side in. There, got it right at last. Just have bear with me. That's the same length. They don't have to be the same length. But I'll just start doing the same length anyway. Just for this uh, demonstration. Looking good. As I said, I'm just doing a simple loop. Save it. Save changes so you're not messing around with the trap. Deleting things. As I've said before, I have Parkinson's, so I shake and tremor a lot, so I do delete and move things without realising it. So when I've done something, built the track, as I always save changes. So I don't uh, delete anything by accident. Now you want two, I hope I'm doing this right, two, signal, or two lights or signals. facing outwards and two facing inwards <clears throat> so you don't get confused I've just shrunk well I don't, so I don't get confused I'm just shrinking them down a bit obviously when you build your layout and you add these to a proper layout you could put them back to back put one slightly smaller than the other make them a little more natural do whatever you want hide them whatever so you've only got the one showing is just to give you a rough idea how to set it up. This is quite a long video for me. I think it's going to be about 35 minutes or more, maybe. But I wanted to fit everything in and do a like a step-by-step -step guide. 
I'm just using the basic light signals here just got the one light red or green one light yet yeah. uh, set them up on the other side now matching them you can set these up however you want however you feel you need want to have them it take, does take a bit of time it's well worth taking your time until you get used to what you're doing I was going to speed the camera up the footage up but uh, I really wanted to do a proper step by step guide well let's put the inward facing ones in place <clears throat> right that's all the lights in place I think yeah all that don't forget to save them when you've done save changes don't save the uh, complete layout until you're happy with it I'll just save changes using the edit tool I'll click Q and that little thing comes up we're doing the inward facing ones the ones the lights facing inwards first pick the track we'll put the orange on one I'm going to rely on the red ones for now I'm not quite sure what the difference between orange and red is press Q again inward facing make sure you're on the right track Put the orange on one, put the red on three, so it's just past the lights, or just touching the lights. That's a bit sharp. <coughs> That'll do, save it, or apply, I should say. I'm doing all the inner ones first, so I don't get confused. Oh, I missed the light out there. I've just, not, oh no, I've not. I couldn't see it then. Press Q. This little thing comes up, little what do you call it? Display. I'll do apply. Press Q again on the next one. This is in the orange to yeah, don't forget to set your direction. Set the orange to one. Red. Try this on two, that should do it. Apply. I do all of the inward facing ones. No, I'm facing the ones that will be controlling the inner line of the uh, crossover points or sidings. That's about right. Apply. Try one. No, too short. Two should do it. Let's apply. Just go around all your lights. Doing the same thing, pressing Q. Your setup board appears. You can try different things until you're happy with it. <clears throat> yeah, apply. Now let's do the outward facing light signals, AI signals, the ones that control the single line coming onto the crossover sidings or crossing points, whatever you want to call them. Press Q. Now I'm not sure what the difference, what the orange does, but I'm going to make most of them red because I need them stopping at the sidings, you see. So I presume you would need more red than orange showing because you don't want a train going into the and colliding. As I said, it's his first time I've done this really. I've not played around with the lights that much, apart from on Earlstown Junction, and I couldn't get them working the way I wanted to. And to be honest, with these signals, with this, using just the signs, it seems to work fine for me at the minute.
just have lights on there just for pure decorative show just for decoration really I'm just trying to work out if you do need yellow showing I don't think the way I'm setting up I don't think you do now when you're happy with it oh, not the can yet oh. No, you don't need the orange showing. Apply. Oh, let's mess about. Let's apply it now. Just go around doing the same thing, the outward facing ones, using this to control the single track. Don't forget to switch direction. Make sure you're on the right track you're on. If it's not going up the points the way you want it, just switch your points over. See, like that, can you see? Then apply. As I said, I'm not sure if this is going to work. It's a bit of trial and error, this, really. I've read the thing through a couple of times, the official AI guideline. Guide. Switch direction, make sure you're on the right track that you're doing. We're doing the outer track now. Apply. Now we'll do the inner tracks. Let's put the orange on one. Make the red go round. Switch points around. Switch tracks. Now that should do it. Apply. Just keep round, going round, doing the same thing, doing the inner track. Make sure your outer track's on the outer track, the inner track's on the inner track, I think. You'll have to have a bit of trial and error to get this right. Right, that's on the inner track, that looks right to me. Yeah. Apply. Let's check the outer track on this one. Switch direction, orange to one, turn the red up so it goes round. Well, what I forgot to do there was put it onto the outer track, but I'll go around and check, all, check them all before I set the trains going later. Let's make sure the on the right tracks that you're trying to cover the outer track the apply it's just a matter of going around repeating the same thing making sure you're facing the right tracks in a track in a track you just go around repeating this right uh, See if we can get this working. All the lights seem to be on red at the minute. Uh, not sure why. Let's just give it a bash in a minute. See what happens. Start this train going. Press Y to initiate the uh, AI. The lights didn't seem to change or nothing. Shh. I think you've got to go inside the cab to initiate the auto switch. I'm not sure about that. Something I'll have to look up and you can just try it yourself. I'm going inside the cab. Go in miniature. Or big, whatever you want to call it. Go in large scale. Why does that start? Switch the AI off and back on again. See what happens. I think the auto switch only comes on if you actually go inside the cab in large scale. I'm not sure about that though. I'm just guessing really. Right, the train's going. Let's see if it auto switches the points over. It doesn't crash into that train that's waiting in there. Or it could be waiting at a station or whatever. Well, it's 
missed it. Let's turn that around and set that in motion. <clears throat> right, we'll see if this works. Fingers crossed, everyone. Fingers on toes. Oh, I've got a uh, DMU in my pocket and my belt. I'll get rid of that. Right, here's the big thing. Question. Will it stop? And it has stopped. Will that switch points? Switch tracks and it has. Yeah, it seems to be working fine. We'll watch it for a couple of minutes. Just out of interest to see if it just keeps working. We're going round again. And the blue one's going in the side and so it should slow down and then stop and it is doing. And the white one's gonna pass. And then the blue one will start moving again because the line in front's clear. It's actually quite amazing this. Very clever how they program these kind of games. And the game itself is massive, I think. It's a cracking game. It's me. Favourite game, I'll give it nine and a half out of ten. And that's a good score for me. Now the white one should slot, should slow down and stop. And the blue one should cross over and pass through. What you could even do here now is uh, put some stop signs, as if you're at a station and they would stop it for whatever you set it to stop for. Let's try setting that at a different time, so you still slow down and pass each other. Right, make sure your auto switch is on. Do you know, I think that's what was going wrong with the Earlstown Junction. I don't think it was initiating the auto drive. I'll have another play with that some one day. I'm happy with it the way it is at the minute. Yeah, it's working. Working fine. It's actually quite amazing and interesting watching them go round and round and beside each other. <laughs> I mean, in a minute, shall we, I think I'll put a couple of stop signs in, as if it's stopping at a station, and see if it still works without them colliding into each other. I'm guessing it would. Oh, I could sit here and watch this for ages. Two trains passing each other. I, 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 could anyone think that would be interesting? I think it is. But when I watch real trains or even models, I love it when two trains pass each other. I don't know why, I just do. I'm not a big train fan. I do like watching them, playing with model trains. I've built a couple of real model trains, about layouts. But I couldn't tell you half of the uh, what the engines were. I've actually drove a real Black 5 uh, for my 40th birthday. That was amazing. Cracking day out, that was. I must said I've got a terrible memory. I can't remember things. You know, classes of train and what have you. I just love them. I think my favourite diesel would probably be a Delta. Is that a 55, if I remember rightly? Or maybe the uh, Scott Tracy, well, Lady Penelope. I think they're, they're a 55. No, no, they're not a 55. Maybe 57 or something. I can't remember. Whatever the uh, Thunderbirds class trains are. 
I forget what they are, 56s or whatever. We've seen the Lady Penelope go pulling class one, uh, Mark one BR coaches through Warrington, Banky and Earlstown Station quite a few times in the past. I've not seen it lately, I don't even know if they're still running, but a few years ago, quite a few years ago, Lady Penelope used to be always going up and down. Well, I'm changing the subject now. So back to this. Stop signing, press Q. Make sure you're on the right track by toggling track if it's not. Direction, apply. When you set your stop sign, don't forget whatever you want to stop it to stop for. 10 seconds, 15, 20, whatever you want. That's stopping a bit past, way past actually. It's a matter of just adjusting it. If it's going too fast with the stop, you could always put a speed sign in and slow your train down to 10, 15 miles an hour, whatever you want. I'll uh, show you that in a minute when I sorted the stop signs out. Q, press Q. Get where you want it first. Make sure you get it on the right track as well. Toggle track, make sure it's on the right track. Toggle direction, if you want a single direction. Make sure it's facing the right way you want it. Set your time, apply. Now I save with the edit tool, save changes, so I don't delete or move anything. And then the train should stop for that designated time now, 10, 15 seconds, before going round again. So you could have them stopping at a station or whatever. The steam train, you could have it stopping at a water tower. Pretend it's getting a quick fill up, top up with water or a coal depot, whatever you want. Obviously, you could put a sign on that side and the train will stop there as well. It's just about to doing what you want to do and playing around with it till you get, get it. The train's doing what you want them to do. Pretty amazing, really, isn't it? I think it is. Well, that seems to be working fine. Watch this all day, mate. See the blue ones waiting for the designated fifteen seconds before it pulls off again. Let's put some speed signs down. On the main line, the single track, we want it going faster. We don't want it going too fast, so you set it wherever you want it to set. I'm going to leave it head in both directions. 31, that'll do. Copy that sign. Let's check that, yeah. 31. Copy that. Now we're going to slow it down before it gets to the stop sign to make sure it stops in time. See if it makes a difference. It should do. Total direction. Make sure it's on the right track if it's not. Press toggle track. Set the speed. We're going to have it going both ways. Set it at 15. 
apply. I'll do the same on the other side in a minute. Oh yeah, don't forget to put your speed back on both sides of the track. You can have it facing both ways. If you want it going one way, you just toggle direction. Set it at one direction, then toggle the direction to the direction you want. We'll set this speed up here. And then something's not right there, what have I done? Well, we'll see if it works anyway. Yeah, it slows down. Brilliant, that. When it goes back on the main line, off single track main line, it should speed back up to 31 miles an hour where I've got it set at. Why is that stopping? Oh, hang on. I told you there was something wrong, didn't I? I think I've probably got a stop sign there instead of a speed sign. I'm assuming. I have. I've got a stop sign in there. Duh. My duh brain. Let's put a stop sign, a speed sign there this time, not a stop sign, a speed sign. Press Q, apply, it's set at 15. Now it'll slow down when it hits the stop sign. Now I've done a video on how to set audio on your layout before. But I'm just going to do a quick recap on it. Save people searching for that, vid for that uh, particular video. Let's put a little woods or a little forest there. I'm not bothering with colours or different trees or whatever, I'm just, this is the only demonstration. Right, go over to this board here, click enable, view audio options. Now I'm not sure about whether you set this on this board, whether you go to the ambient sound volume, sorry. Whether you have that on zero or you have it on whatever. I'm not sure about this yet. Can't remember. Trial and error. We'll, we'll see what happens. You go to edit, source. And then I don't bother with add regions. I just add new source, which gives you this little speaker. Go over to where you want it. In this case, it's the little wood or forest. Click it down. Press Q. Your option ball comes up, set it river, so click on the river while your sounds come up, nature forest, set your volume, set it at 20, 51, now it'll be too loud, 20, range 10 that'll do, apply, no sound, maybe you do need that ambient, sound, vol ambient volume up, I'm guessing you do. back to this board, the audio board, this is just to the left of your main board, still thinking about whether you need that or not, I think you do because it, there was no sound coming out of that first speaker, just turn it up again, add a new source, get your speaker, that's set at a river there so I'm going to leave it on a river, we'll pretend we've got a river there, press Q, Set your volume, whatever you want it at, 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever. You can set the range. That's the range from which you start to hear it from. 10, so it's, I'm not sure what it stands for. But if you set it at 20, obviously you'd hear it a lot further away. Right, sit out of that. I'm going to put a little river in there. Seems to have to have in the river sound than have an actual river there. I'm not going to town on this, I'm just going to 
Bump some shapes down, colour in blue, that'll do. Near that river flowing. Does anybody else need a wee? Pick a nice little soft blue colour, that'll do. I presume that's blue, I'm actually colour blind, but I remember that being in the blue position. Sounds great though. You know, it sounds like a river flowing, doesn't it? Over here we've got the forest sounds. Now they're a bit loud, you could always turn them down. That's just a bit of messing about trial and error till you get them right. Yeah, you do need the ambient, so nothing. Nothing on the over here on the river bank. Let's turn it back up to about six or seven. Yeah, they're back on. You do need that up. You do need your ambient sound up. That ambient volume, sorry. I think we'll just add a factory and put a factory sound in. Can we use as a factory or a works? Some kind of works unit. Well, we'll just grab that. Well, I'm not having any other of that over here. Twizzle it round. Leave it in position. Right, that'll do. Go over to your audio board. Click. Your audio options. Edit audio sources, add new source, get your little speaker, put it down. Don't forget that will be invisible once you apply them. Set your volume, set your sound, sorry. Pick a sound. Oh, there's factory sound. We've got three to choose from. I'm going to have the factory a bit louder. And the forest and the not 525 though. Didn't mean to do that. 25, that's it. It's at range 10, that'll do. Go over to the audio board again. Apply and hide icons. Now when you're happy with it, save changes with the edit tool. Before you go off it, don't forget to save your layout on the main save board. Obviously I'm not saving it because this is just a demonstration, I won't be keeping this. This is just purely for the video. That seems to be working fine. And we've got audio on the, the railway as well. Well I hope this has been useful to someone. Took me a while to make this, I kept doing things wrong, editing it, putting it together. It just took a couple of hours at least. I think I started at 3 in the morning, it's now half past 5. I'm going to have a coffee and I'm going to upload it. Thanks for watching.